first. Come on up. I'll let you handle the mic, brother. Thank you so much. My assistant, Diane Kramer. Good morning. It was so good to be back here again and uh, get to chat with a few familiar faces as the me before the meeting. Um, I'm just so happy you are a people of praise in this house. Uh, it was a wonderful worship service. You know, the Bible says, let everything that has, has breath praise the Lord. And recently I heard it shared that in the scriptures there are nine expressions of worship and praise. And that the number nine has a meaning of completeness. So I ask, I ask you this, how many of you want to praise the Lord completely? Like about, about a third of you. How many of you want to praise the Lord completely? <laughs> okay, that's better. That's better. So anyway, we know God dwells in the praises of his people. And that, that pre in that presence, there is fullness of joy, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. We all need to be strong. So we all should feel pretty strong after those three amazing songs. We also learned in the song that uh, our weapon is a melody. Amen? So part of praise, obviously, is singing, right? Well, this message I heard recently divided worship and praise into three categories. And why, as I'm going to share them quickly here with you, I want to encourage you, if you haven't tapped into any of these expressions, I encourage you, while during your walk on this earth with the Lord, you tap into each and every one at some point in time. It might be corporately and publicly, it might be privately, but God really wants us to completely know and, and learn and express um, worship toward him and really at what it does is fulfill us. So with our mouth to praise him, to worship him, we can speak, we can sing, and we can shout. And you can all probably think of scriptures that where we sing unto the Lord and shout unto God and so forth. Secondly, with our hands, we can do three things to worship the Lord. And I witness that here a lot. Uh, some which are very easy for some of us, some not, to lift our hands before the Lord. I've been in many churches where I see a tenth of the church lifting their hands. The rest are uncomfortable. Don't be uncomfortable to surrender to the Lord by lifting your hands. It is such a release. I remember the first time I did when I was in college and was getting saved, thought everyone was looking at me. They were not. And, it, you know, I'm so glad he set me free in that, in that one little area. So we can lift our hands. We can clap our hands. Did a great job doing that today. And we can also make music with our hands, uh, playing an instrument. Lots of, lots of the folks up here were using their hands to do that. And I, I am not musical, so I will share that to my limit would be the tambourine. And I don't think anyone here is not, not able to do that, whether it's offbeat or onbeat. Anyway, and thirdly, thirdly, is our bodies. How can we express praise and worship with our bodies? Well, as David did, we can dance before the Lord. You may not, this may not be a public dancing church. I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe just from time to time. But I know each and every one of you has a, a private place in your home you can let loose and dance before the Lord. Such a release, such an honor to God when you do that. We can also kneel. I'm not a kneeling Christian a lot, I have to admit. But at the last service we were, I really felt compelled to kneel. I was just overwhelmed with his presence and, and his, his love for me. I had to bow down. It's a, it's a sign of humility. And it really, it, I think it honors God to do that. And thirdly, we can, we can lay prostrate, prostrate before the Lord. And, and again, another expression of our worship, honor, praise, and giving him all the glory, uh, submitting ourselves to everything he has for us. So again, if you have not ever danced before the Lord, give it a try sometimes. If you don't kneel before God, that is a real, a real uh, place of re receptivity. I really believe we receive um, when we humble ourselves before him. And also, you know, 
give a shout, lift your hands, but knowing that when we praise him, it's, it's where his presence will fall then, and that's, where, that's how we thrive. So praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. You got it? Amen. If men ever had to wear high heels, we would never leave the home. Amen. <laughs> amen. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Well, here we go. We have much to cover, uh, so let's get on with it during worship. Uh, even uh, before Pastor Dave uh, took authority. What do you mean? He, he took authority. What do you mean? He took authority. Amen. He knows who he is. He knows what he's got. He used the name that is above every name. Amen. Jesus said, all authority has been given unto me. Then he turned right around and delegated it to us. Therefore, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So we have been exercising our delegated authority ever since Christ arose. Amen. And so as he took authority, something happened. He asked you if you felt it. Maybe you did and maybe you didn't. But what happened because of what he did was the atmosphere changed. You have authority over your atmosphere. We, as a gathering of God's people, have authority over the corporate atmosphere. And that's what Pastor Dave was doing. He was taking authority over the corporate atmosphere. And he backed the enemy down. And he made it very clear that we're in charge. We're in control. He made it very clear that we call the shots. He made it very clear that we control the atmosphere. And as Pastor Dave was addressing the atmosphere and changing it, which, by the way, you can do in your life as well. I began to see that, I'm just going to tell you what I saw. I began to see this church. And I began to see that it's healthier than it's ever been. You're more unified than you've ever been. Doesn't mean there aren't issues, don't mean there aren't differences. It doesn't mean everybody does the same thing, thinks the same thing, feels the same thing, looks the same way, talks the same way. That's not what it means. There can be, still be diversity, but regarding the essentials, we're on the same page. I think you're healthier than any of my previous visits. I feel like you're more unified than any of my previous visits. And it doesn't mean everybody agrees with everything that's going on. But I sense, I discern that you're healthier than you've ever been. I sense or discern that you're more unified than you've ever been. And I've got to tell you what I saw. I saw a hill, a big one, big hill. And I saw that as a church, you've been climbing up a hill for a long time. It's been an uphill climb. We get that. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort. Sometimes you might take a couple steps forward and one backward, but you just keep trucking. You just keep plowing. You just keep moving ahead. Still, it's an uphill climb. So we understand that. But today, and I'm announcing this, and I'm declaring it, and I'm prophesying it because it's true. This church came this morning to the crest of that mountain. You've been climbing, 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 and you're all going. Boy, that's the truth. It's been a long and a hard climb. We didn't quit because you're not quitters. Amen. You didn't give up because you're not quitters. But you admit it's been a long uphill climb. He's right. But in the name of Jesus, that name, I declare that this church has come to the crest of that hill today. Now watch. Now watch. You're not going to slope back. You're not going to lose ground. Now watch. Going down is going to be a lot easier than climbing up. I declare that you're now on the home stretch. Now I declare going down's better than climbing up. I prophesy that you have reached the crest 
Now you're going to begin to pick up momentum. Come on. You're going to accelerate in the vision that God has for you because you're going to be able to get more done in less time because going down the mountain is a lot easier than climbing up it. And while you're going down the mountain, you can have some fun. You can have some fun. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so I announce and declare and prophesy and rejoice in you as a people that you're healthier than ever, more unified than ever, that you've crested the mountain, you're going down the other side. So enjoy, 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 says the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. I thought that was good. I thought that was good. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Uh, the next thing that I want uh, to share uh, is just literally a comment uh, about the prophetic. And then there are a few folks that I want to prophesy uh, to and over, maybe some couples, maybe some individuals. Uh, that's what I do. Uh, but before I do that, I've got an order from the Lord, I think, that I'm, what I'm supposed to do. So let me do that and get to that. Real quick, stand up if you would, please. Uh, what is your first name? Sarah. Hey, Sarah. And how old are you? Fourteen. Fifteen, cool. I know it was a hard question, so that's why you stumble. <laughs> that's why you stumble. Uh, but the Lord would say, now, sweetheart, I don't know you at all. I've not talked to anybody about you. You're a 15-year-old, beautiful little teenage girl. But the word of the Lord came to me for you. And the Lord would say, prophetic gift prophetic calling, prophetic ministry. Prophetic gift, prophetic calling, prophetic ministry. Prophetic gift, prophetic calling, and prophetic ministry. The Lord would say, from this day forward, the gift of prophecy that is resident in you, because I put it in you as a little girl, the Lord would say it's going to come to the surface. There's going to be a bubbling up and a flowing out. A bubbling up and a flowing out. In fact, the Lord would say your prophetic gift is going to be like a bubbling up. One minute you're minding your own business, and then, ooh, 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 there's going to be a, a bubbling up. It doesn't mean it's going to take you out of control. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet, so it's not going to take you out of control into some wild, crazy place. But you're going to experience that bubbling up. Oh, and when you do, you're going to begin to put to words that which you feel is bubbling up in you. So you're going to bubble up and flow forth, bubble up and flow forth. So you have a prophetic gift that's being stirred up, activated, plugged in, charged in that, put that cord in and charge up the device, the prophetic gift. So you have a prophetic gift, a prophetic call. That means a lifestyle. And you'll have a prophetic ministry because your gift of prophecy is not for you or about you. It's for and about others. So at 15, uh, the Lord would say, welcome to the ministry. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Am I going to please stand up? Now, we're going to have to have a special offering uh, at the end of this meeting because so far, everyone that I've prayed for has multiple cuts in their genes, ma major... <laughs> major gaps in their genes and uh, we have to pray for these poor young teenage girls to have new genes that don't have and the worship leader girl she had like 27 slices 27 slices down each you've got to dress your worship team better Dave they just can't they can't have that here's what's really scary on the old guys will remember this it was my generation, my age group, that started that trend in the late 60s. How many remember that? Yeah, yeah, all the old people raise their hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We started that in the late 60s. It was cool then. It was cool then. It's cool now. It's cool now. But you, you got to know, these aren't discount price jeans. You, right? Yeah, come on, they'll tell you. They're top-of-the-line jeans, and they come pre-damaged. They mean they damage them, then they charge exorbitant prices uh, to be a teenager again. Okay, and uh, your first name? Gracie. Gracie? Yeah. Okay, Gracie. Uh, the Lord would say, wasn't that a good word for uh, your blonde-haired friend to your right? Yeah. Wasn't that a good word? <laughs> Didn't you rejoice when, when she heard accurately from the Lord? Here's the word of the Lord for you. Same to you, same to you, same to you, same to you. Same to you, same to you, same to you, same to you. <laughs> prophetic gift, listen, 
prophetic call, prophetic ministry. So stir up the gift that is within you. Stir up the gift that is within you. You're hearing from the Lord. It's a still small voice and you've expected to be overwhelmed and to feel goosebumps and to have fire fall and to hear audible voices. None of that is going to happen, says the Lord. You, my child, are going to prophesy by faith. That's how you'll do it. That's how you'll do it. That's how I do it. You prophesy by faith. So don't expect feelings. That's not part of the formula. But stir up the gift that is within you and begin to prophesy over my people. Prophetic gift. There, it's resident in you. Prophetic calling. A lifestyle. A lifestyle. This gift is going to uh, dominate your life. And a prophetic calling and a prophetic ministry to the body of Christ. Your gift in ministry is not about you or for you. I could have just said one prophecy over two people, but I wanted you to know, same to you, get ready to prophesy, get ready to prophesy, get ready for revival to break out around you, get ready for revival to break out around you, get ready to gather God's people, get ready to gather God's people. God's not going to use the 68-year-old guy to have a revival among high school students. He's going to use you and you. So get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Make yourself available. Make yourself available. You have had an issue with whether or not you are good enough for God to use. You feel good about everybody else. Everybody else is good enough. But you have said in your heart of hearts, I need to know that I'm good enough, Gracie, right? Mm -hmm. I need to know that I am good enough. You are the righteousness of of God right now. You can't be any gooder. You can't be any more righteous because righteousness is a gift. So accept it and receive it and do the work that I've called you to do, says the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Amen. Are you guys husband and wife? Can I pray for you guys real quick? Would you stand right there if you would please so I can just get a little closer to you? Stand right there if you would please, sir. And your first name? Andre. Hey, Andre, and? Aurelia. Aurelia? Yes. That's a cool name. Thank you. Aurelia. You're the first person I've ever prayed for named Aurelia. <laughs> That's awesome. Why don't you join hands? Uh, and the Lord would say, my son and daughter, I have brought you here this day to end the war. I'm pulling you out of the battle. It's been a long and treacherous military campaign where the enemy almost won, but you have walked by faith and not by sight. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. But I have brought you here to remove the witchcraft that has been launched against you by my ignorant bride. Please forgive the ignorance of my people. Please forgive forgive the ignorance of my church. Please forgive my ignorant bride that did you too so much harm. I brought you here today in a place of freedom and liberty to release you. I'm releasing you son. I'm releasing you Daughter, from that which my ignorant bride has placed upon you, I am breaking off of you the witchcraft. There goes the fear. There goes the domination. There goes the manipulation. There goes the control. I break the spirit of witchcraft off of both of you. And whom the uh, son uh, sets free is free indeed. Now you too will begin to see clearly and hear clearly the plan of God. I have taken you through the valley of the shadow of death. You have survived, but that's not good enough. Now I'm taking you from survive to thrive. Now you will thrive in your lives uh, serving me. Now you will thrive in your marriage. Now you will thrive in physical health. Now you will thrive in financial health. Now you will find your place in the church. Now you will find your true place of influence in the church. So the Lord would say, this day, uh, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. You two are coming out of a prison. You two are coming out of the prison of control, manipulation, domination, and fear. I break the witchcraft spirit off of you. I set you free. Freedom and liberty. Freedom and liberty. I release you, son. I release you, daughter. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Now here comes my spirit, says the Lord. Here comes my Holy Spirit. I'm going to nail you. I'm going to zap you. I'm going to cream you. Here I 
come. I'm going to fill you, son, to overflowing. Dreams, visions, and prophecy will come forth from you. Dreams, visions, and prophecy will come forth from you. I break the word curse off of you, son. I break the word curse off of you, daughter. I break family curses off of you, son. I break family curses off of you, daughter. And the Lord says, now I'm going to bless you. Now, now the blessing of the Lord will make you too rich in every sense of that word and add no sorrow. I break barrenness off of both of you. I break barrenness off of your lives, your health, your finances, your family, your ministry, and I prophesy fruitfulness. Fruitfulness, 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 fruitfulness by the hand of the living God says the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Amen, amen. <clears throat> Turn to your neighbor and say, stupid virus. stupid virus. Amen. I like to get that in every chance I can. Listen very carefully to our text. I have a text for the morning. It happens to be uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, in the uh, fifth chapter, 1 Thessalonians 5, and I'm going to be reading it, uh, sorry, verse uh, 19, sorry, verse 19, yes. I want to read it to you out of the Passion Translation. Good friends of ours, Diane and I are good friends with Brian uh, Candy Simmons. They are the translators of the Passion Translation, which is really good. I have a signed copy of it right here from Brian and Candy. Anyway, I want to read to you out of 1 Thessalonians 5, and I want to read uh, 19, 20, uh, 21, and 22. Listen to these verses. This is our text for the morning. Listen to these verses out of uh, the Passion Translation. Never restrain or put out the fire of the Holy Spirit. I think we need to heed that warning because it's possible we, at any time, can restrict or restrain or put out the fire of the Holy Spirit. That's why Paul wrote the warning not to do it. And then he goes on to say, listen carefully, and don't be one who scorns prophecies, but be faithful to examine them, good advice, by putting them to the proper tests, that's good advice, and then afterward, Hold tightly to what has been proven right. That's what we're going to do this morning. These young girls are going to do that. They're going to prove and test and try and judge and see whether it was God or not. That's what they're going to do with it. Then when it's been proven to be right and accurate and timely, they're going to hold on tightly to it. This precious couple that I prayed for, don't know them, don't know anything about them, uh, but they're going to prove and test and try and judge this prophetic word, and then they're going to hold on tightly to it. So you have a responsibility. Once you know it's the word of the Lord, you've got to hold on tightly to it. Can't nobody else do that for you. You've got to do that for you. And now I want to read to you what Brian said in his uh, notes about what I just read to you. Just listen to this. This is very good. There is no implication in the context of verses 19 to 20, uh, there, I'm sorry, there is, <laughs> there is an implication in the context of verses 19 and 20 that we can put out the Spirit's fire when we scorn prophecy. That's what it said. Prophecy is a valid gift of the Holy Spirit needed by the church today. Everyone say today. There is no place in scripture or in church history that indicates the gift of prophecy has ceased or disappeared. Well, where'd that come from, Prophet Kramer? We made it up. It is an active function of the Holy Spirit in the church around the world. We must not ignore, despise, or scorn any true gift of the Holy Spirit. Putting out the fire of the Holy Spirit is connected to
to scorning the prophetic ministry. We need prophets and prophecy to keep the fire or the inspiration of the Holy Spirit burning in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Couldn't have said it better. Amen. So that's what we're doing this morning. We're going to have a prophetic service. We've already started. These two young ladies will never be the same. I said these two young ladies will never be the same. I don't know this couple, but I will say to them and to you that many times a prophet will see things you won't see or a prophet will see things you can't see. There's only two categories of blindness, either things you can't see or things you won't see. Uh, Many times people will walk up to me and say, you know, uh, I just didn't see what you were talking about. And my response is, I know. (laughs) That's why God let me see it for you. Come on, come on. And so today, um, I believe that there are uh, six couples that have already been spoken to uh, by Pastor Dave. If you're those six couples, I need you to come forward right now and line up right across the front here. Pastor Dave has already spoken to you in advance. Come on down, the price is right. (laughs) Six couples. Okay, I'm just doing what Dave said to do. Okay, good. I'd like you guys to start right here. Sir, I'd like you to stand right here, my dear, right here. Right over here, and then, oh, you, right here, man, right here, right here, good, and then the rest of you down here, right, right down here, stand right there, shoulder to shoulder, get ready, get ready, get ready. You guys getting married? Yes. Way to go. (laughs) That's so cool. Congratulations. Great, great, great. Good, good, good. All right, here we go. Uh, Now, that I'm aware of, uh, are you guys in the row? Yes. They are? Okay, you guys need to come down there. Go down there. Why did you do that? Because I saw him first in the row. That's why I'm doing it. Don't ask me why, but it's going to be good. So anyway, uh, listen very carefully. Uh, I've been here enough, you might know the drill. Now I'm asking you not to slide back into uh, just spectating, but I want to ask you to participate in this meeting. Well, what can we do? Well, I'm going to ask you to contribute your love, which happens to be stronger than death, Contribute your love. What do you mean? Love on them. What about me? This is not about you right now. It's about them. So I want you to love on them because love puts others first. So I want you to love on them. Jesus, get them. Jesus, nail them. Jesus, cream them. Jesus, hit them with your best shot. Let them never be the same. Bless them, bless them, bless them. Bless them, Jesus. Bless them. Whatever they need from you, Jesus, give it to them. That's love. It puts others first. So the first thing you're going to do is contribute your love. The second thing that you're going to contribute is your faith. I want you to believe with me that what I just read is true. The gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. Prophecy has always been a part of the landscape of the church. It's an Old Testament reality. It's a New Testament reality. Prophets are real. We need what they bring. And you're going to have faith that God has arranged all these details. God spoke to the leadership to bring these folks up. Prophet Kramer was ordained by God to be here at this time and this season to deliver his word of the Lord to them in the midst of their circumstances. And we're all going to leave here today realizing God is God. God is sovereign. God is omnipotent, all-powerful. God is omniscient all-knowing, and God, listen to this, I thought about this this morning, I was ready to be here around 5.30 this morning, God is also, listen to this, He is omnipresent, He is all-present, all-present, God is in Pennsylvania, God is in, is it Bradford County? God is in Bradford County, imagine that, God is in north of Canton, amen, God is in, on this property, and in this building, God is here, He's here in his fullness. We didn't get the leftovers. We don't get a little percentage of him. He is here omnipresent. He is here in all. How about that? All of his presence, all of his wisdom and knowledge, all of his power. He's here. I don't know about you, but that's why I go to church. Amen. Amen. 
So I want all of you to get ready. I know that you are. I want you all to get ready. I don't make this stuff up. I have no idea right now at all what God is going to say. But you girls are going to learn by watching me that you can bubble up and prophesy clearly and accurately with almost no foreknowledge. You have to have a little bit of foreknowledge to know what you're about to say, but you won't get it a week in advance or an hour in advance. Sometimes you bubble up as you begin to lay hands on people, if you're getting this, young ladies, and you just begin to pray. That's what I want you to do. I want you girls to begin just to, as you're led by the Spirit, ask people, may, may I lay hands on you? May, would it be okay if I just pray for you? No one's going to say no. I mean, almost no one's going to say no. So you can start prophesying by just laying hands on people and starting to pray. And then as you're led by the Spirit, you begin to prophesy more. It started out as a prayer, but then ended up being a prophecy. So don't set yourself up and get all nervous and say, Hi, Denny Kramer told me I'm going to prophesy over you. Don't do that. Just, just be led of the Spirit. And then just casually and relationally and in a really low-key way say, hey, may I pray for you? And then just start praying and see what the Holy Spirit does. What he'll do is he'll take over your prayers and you'll start praying spirit-led prayers, which are more than just supplications, but they're inspired by the Holy Spirit. And before you know it, you're prophesying over those people. So do you get what I'm saying? Okay, now, if you follow my instructions and all of this works, I will take full credit. <laughs> all right? If both of you choke and bomb, we never met and I never shared with you these insights. Is it a deal? And I'm saying that because, listen, I want you to have a sense of humor. It's not going to happen overnight. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to say, man, what was I thinking? I make mistakes. I still make them. So don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. But I know what I'm talking about. Both of you have a prophetic gift that's going to affect a lot of people. Isn't that cool? Okay, good, good, good. Okay, here we go, go, go. Here we go, go, go. Uh, and your name, sir? Bill Matthews. Bill, hey, Bill. And? Lisa. Lisa, join hands. Join hands. <laughs> Lord says, son and daughter, I'm taking over. The enemy that has come against you one way is going to flee seven. The enemy that has come against you one way. The enemy that has come against you one way. Let there be no doubt. He has come against you one way. But the Lord would say he's going to flee seven. Get ready for seven areas of your lives to be blessed. The demonic hold that the enemy has placed upon your lives, your circumstances, your your finances, your family, your future, your properties, your vehicles, your health, everything about you, everything about you has come under an attack for the last three and a half years. The Lord would say, the enemy that has come against you will now flee seven. I'm going to give you seven deliverances, seven healings, seven areas of victory in your personal, private lives that the enemy has run roughshod over you about. So get ready for victory. Get ready for victory, 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 says the Lord. Also, my son and daughter, I'm going to begin to connect you uh, to the church in a much a deeper way. The enemy has tried to infiltrate, and he's raised all kinds of reasons why you couldn't be into the house of God. And then when you come in to the house of God, uh, God, there is stress and strain all over you. I remove the stress. I remove the strain. I remove the pressure. I remove the fear. Woman of God, a spirit of fear has tormented you since you were nine years of age. I break that spirit of fear off of you. You will never be the same. Fear will no longer torment you. Man of God, there's a generational curse upon you that's been in your family for some four generations. I am breaking it off of you. I want to set you free from that. So this is your day. This is the first day of the rest of your life. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, man of God. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, woman of God. These are the days of great growth, great progress, and great maturity in the kingdom of God. I brought you both into the kingdom when neither of you had anything going for you. I just brought you in. I just said, I'm going to build this couple up. I'm going to make them strong. I'm going to make them successful and fruitful, and I've not changed my mind. I'm going to bless this life, and I'm going to bless this life way beyond what you could, to, could do alone, says the Lord. You may be seated, guys.
And your first name? Caroline. Caroline. And so it says, woman of God, faithful, 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 a behind-the-scenes woman. You've done everything I've asked you to do, called you to do. When it wasn't fun, when it wasn't convenient, uh, you were a true disciple. And the Lord would say, you've been following me for years, doing the will of God. Uh, I see the checks you've written. I see the generosity pouring forth from your life. I see how you've supported the ministry financially and in prayer. You are as well an intercessor and you've never understood why intercession wasn't more popular because you love it. The burden that is upon you is a calling. And the Lord would say, I want you to continue to be diligent in prayer. The Lord would say, there are battles yet to fight. I want you to lead the way. I want you to lead the way. I want your ministry motto and your prayer motto to be charge, charge. I want you to go into battle with the armor of God on. I want you to go into battle with the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit. I'm also going to begin to give you some personal victories in your personal life, your health, your relationships, your family, and I'm going to begin to heal and restore and do what you asked me to do years ago. The Lord would also say, my daughter, you had every right uh, to live in bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness from dis uh, disasters years ago. But you said, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be bitter. I'm going to be better. And the fruit of the Spirit abounds in you because you made a choice to turn the other cheek. You turn the other cheek so many times, you got a crink in your neck. But it's a good crink. And the Lord would say, the Lord would say, the Lord would say, because you have shown mercy to others that did not deserve it, I have shown you mercy in your own life. You are non-judgmental, non-critical, but you're highly analytical. You're highly analytical. You've got that computer-like analytical brain going on inside that noggin of yours, and so I want you to pull back a little bit. Don't overanalyze the season that you're in. It's a good time, a wonderful time, a time of intimacy with me, and I'm going to begin to give you a new vision. You said to me not long ago, Lord, I feel like something's up, and I don't know what it is. I, I feel like I need a new vision. I'm going to re- envision you for the next five to seven years says the Lord amen and your first name Janet, Janet. Jana and Glenn. and Glenn, you may be seated there, woman of God. Uh, Jana and Glenn, right? Okay, close your eyes. The Lord would say, pillars in the church, pillars in the church, pillars in the church, pillars, 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 pillars. Uh, you two are so uh, set in the concrete, the foundation of the church, uh, that you've been pillars for a long time. You don't toot your own horn. You're not looking for a title. You're not looking for income. You just want to be about the work of the Lord. You just want to be around uh, your uh, master's duties. And so the Lord would say, son and daughter, I made you both servants. I gave you servants' hearts. You just want to do what you're called to do. You both do it with an excellent spirit. And you never have understood the unfaithful spirit that seemed to be prevail prevalent uh, in this area. But you two have stood your ground. You two would not be persuaded away from what I called you to do. So let me congratulate you. You and you are in the will of God. You've been in the will of God. When others packed their bags and said, we're out of here. Uh, you two held your ground, held your ground, held your ground in the will of God. Therefore, I consider you two a foundational couple. Therefore, I consider both of you pillars in the church, pillars in the church. But the Lord would say, it ain't over, it ain't over, it ain't over. You've been saying, well, Lord, we're getting up there in years. And chronologically, chronologically, you two have, should have been put out the pasture five years ago. <laughs> but, but the Lord would say, but the Lord would say, oh, 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 I'm not putting you two out anywhere. I'm not putting you two out to any pasture. What a waste that would be. What a waste it would be. It would waste your wisdom. It would waste your experience. It would waste the fire. You two have a passion in you. The younger generation, those that are 30 and 40 years younger than you, they need what you two got. They need what you two carry. So my son and daughter, you're going to begin to bubble up and overflow. You're going to begin to bubble up and overflow. There's a zeal in you, son and daughter. It's going to be contagious. It needs to be caught by the younger generation. So don't you pull back. Don't you go out the pasture. Uh, God would say, connect, connect, connect. 
with the younger generation. You two have much more to give. You two have much more to deposit. And the Lord would say, a spirit of infirmity has tried to attach itself to you. And I break that spirit off of you, and I declare from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, that devil, that devil that has afflicted your body is not going to have its way. I'm going to heal and restore. I'm going to reclaim your life for the glory of God, says the Lord. My daughter, there was a time when the prophetic flowed forth from you like a river, but you went through some persecution and you said, I'm not doing that anymore. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Stir up that gift that is within you. Here comes the fire. I'm going to fill you. I'm going to fill you to overflowing. Where's that couple with the fire? Where's that couple with the fire? Fire, 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 fire. Fire, 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 fire. There's also some people coming back into your lives that have held bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness about you and you. You did nothing wrong, but they've been embittered. They've been unforgiving, and they've been talking behind your back for years. I'm pulling every dagger out of your back and out of your back and some of them are coming back with olive branches of peace in their hands. So get ready for some healed relationships from the past. You're welcome, says the Lord. Amen. <laughs> also, as that couple is uh, sitting uh, down, I saw where you guys live. You may be seated. I saw where you live. I see your house and your land. And there's going to be an unusual presence over your home and your land. Where you live is what I'm talking about. There's going to be an unusual presence that's going to last for the next 90 days. An additional presence of God. Just a wonderful, thick heavier presence of God over your home and over your land, over your property, where you live. And I just see the peace of God dramatically increasing and the joy of the Lord dramatically increasing. And people are going to come out and say, man, when we pulled on your property, wow, what is this? And you're going to tell them it's the Spirit of God. I'm also going to send some people to you that are going to be driving there from a long distance away who are not even here this morning. And they're going to come and visit you and they're going to see you. And when they come into your property, they're going to bring it up. They're going to bring it up to the two of you. And you're going to say, well, let us tell you a story. And then you've got to start praying for the people that I bring to you, says the Lord. Start praying for the people that I bring to you on your property, says the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. And your first name again? Sean. Hey, Sean, and? Helene. Helene? Mm -hmm. Helene. Close your eyes, you love birds. Alebesende. Uh, now, I know you're not married yet, right? So please understand that you're not married yet. So um, the Lord, you got that, right? You're not married yet, Helene, right? Okay. And uh, what time is the ceremony? 2.30. Cool. Okay, get ready, man of God. The Lord says, son. <laughs> Lord says, son. Uh, you've been dealing with an attack from the enemy that has been severe. Oh, he's tried to put depression on you. Oh, he's tried to put heaviness on your spirit. And I'm breaking that off of you. You go ahead and marry that girl. The devil has been uh, talking to you and saying it's going to be too difficult. You're not ready. You're not capable. You love her, but you're going to fail. No, you're not. 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 You go ahead and marry that girl. The Lord says, son, you're a man of God, and she'll be the woman of God I want her to be. So I'm breaking that depression off of you right now. It'll never torment you again. It's a family spirit. It came from your grandmother and mother to you. They did nothing wrong. That's where it came from. I break that spirit off of you. Three generations of depression are coming off of you. And again, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. You're welcome. Also, the Lord says there's going to be a bubbling up of the Holy Spirit in your life. You have had some reading uh, 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 situations where you can't read and retain. A little struggle with reading the written word. There, I've increased your IQ. I've also given you the ability to read and retain anything on a written page. Now it'll jump out. A little bit of ADD that's coming off of you as well. And the Lord would say, this is a clinic for you. A medical hospital facility clinic. I'm healing you in spirit and soul and body. Spirit 
and soul and body. And also, my son, you've been wondering, how come other people prosper and I don't? I've got gifts and skills and talents and abilities, but they don't seem very valuable. I'm going to dramatically increase the value of the gifts and skills, talents and abilities that I have given you. Get ready for an income stream to increase. Right now, it's a trickle. It's kind of trickling in, but it ain't enough. So God says, get ready for an income stream to become dramatically larger, deeper and faster, says the Lord. Woman of God, I've made you sensitive to my spirit. At times, you've struggled with this sensitivity. Is it me or the Lord? Is it me or the Lord? I sure would like a prophet to confirm that I hear from God. You hear from God. I sure would like a prophet to confirm that the gift of discerning of spirits is operating regularly in my life. The gift of discerning of spirits is operating regularly in your life. And you've also said, Lord, he had a depression, but I had it before him, and mine is worse than his, so I sure hope he brings that up. I'm breaking that spirit of heaviness off of you. I'm breaking that spirit of heaviness off of you. That depression, it was the devil. It was the devil. It was demonic on you. It was demonic on you. And the Lord would say, I broke it off of him. Now I'm breaking it off of you. You're going to feel like a million pounds of stuff is coming off of you because a million pounds of stuff is coming off of you. You also have the gift of hospitality. You've already started to talk to yourself like this. Boy, once we get married, I want to have this dream home. uh, and And I want to have that white picket fence. And I want to have a little creek going behind the house. And I want to take the kids down there and play in the creek. And and I've got all these plans, and I've been reading all these magazines, and I want to know, God, if it's you, your dreams are going to come true. You've had a life full of nightmares, uh uh-huh, a life of rejection, betrayal, abandonment, and abuse. Oh, yeah. But the Lord would say, today is the first day of the rest of your life, young lady. I am the great deliverer. I am the healer. And I am healing and delivering you and putting you and you back together again. The Lord would say, son and daughter, what all the king's men and all the king's horses couldn't do, I am putting the two Humpty Dumpties back together again from this day forward, says the Lord. You may be seated. Your first name? Dan. Hey, Dan. And? Dan and Debbie. Join hands. Dan and Debbie. La Bashande, La Basiki, you have heard me say in my word that I make all things new. You're a couple that has been renewed in your spirit time and time again. You're a couple that has uh, adhered to the word of God, a man of the word, a woman of the word, a couple that is not caught up in every uh, 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 um, uh, thing that comes down the pike. Uh, but a man and woman of strength and stability, a man and woman of the word. Uh, By the way, I have seen the contributions financially that you have made to the church and the kingdom of God. Uh, Get ready to reap. Get ready to reap. I'm going to double it, triple it, and and then quadruple the seeds that you two have sowed. You're welcome. And the Lord would say, son and daughter, change is on the horizon. You two have been patient. You've been obedient. You've done the will of God, but you're sensing change. You're sensing an opening of a door. You want to know whether you should go through it. Yes. The Lord would say, I'm going to open doors. You guys need to go through those doors. Changes are coming. Changes are good. I'm not retiring you. I'm refiring you. And I'm taking you two on and up to new responsibilities in the kingdom of God. Now, both of you have been struggling with energy. I'm going to give you the energy back you once had, man of God, and I'm going to give you the energy back. Oh, you once had, woman of God, and I'm going to break the spirit of infirmity that has tried to cripple both of you. You two are going to live to a ripe old age. You're going to do the will of God. Uh, And the Lord would say, son and daughter, uh, get ready to pray as never before. There are some husband and wife prayers that I want you two to agree to do, to pray. And when you do, watch what I'm going to do. When you do, watch what I'm going to do. Now, about five years ago, all hell broke loose in your lives. You guys came under an attack. You didn't know whether you were going to make it. It was Satan's attempt to literally take you out. But look who won. Look who won. And the Lord would say over you and you, na, 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 na. You won, my son. You won, my daughter. And a great victory was realized. But you ain't seen nothing yet. There are victories yet for you two to experience. And even as the prophet said that the church was cresting at the hill and going down the slope, the same to you and you. The days of card climbing, the days of strenuous, hard climbing are behind you. A new grace is on you, my son. And a new grace is on you, my daughter. You two have been the Abraham and Sarah of the church. You two have been the Abraham and the Sarah 
era of the church. You were led to go places no one else went before others went. You two are trailblazers. You two are trendsetters. And so I want you to be bold and aggressive and realize the deposit that is in you and you, says the Lord, and be free and be open and share it with the younger generation. There's at least one couple, they're about 34, 35, 36 years of age, that you two need to deposit into. I'm going to connect you with that, a couple that have two kids. You're going to connect with that couple. You're going to pour into their lives. You are a depositor. You are a depositor. So get ready to lay hands also. Get ready to lay hands on the sick. A wave of healing is coming to this house. A wave of healing. Unprecedented healings, says the Lord. And I want you and you to start praying for the sick and they shall recover. You may be seated. And your first name? Blake. Blake. Hey, Blake. And? Kelly. Kelly. Blake and Kelly. What's your name? Kensley. What is it? Kensley. Kensley. Hi, Kensley. Kensley, are you like five years old? Are you four? You're four. Wow. Cool. How old do you think I am? What's so funny? How old do you think I am? Like 30? 96. The, the, the Lord would say, I have a word for you, but it's not from the Lord, so mind your own business. No, it's, what's adorable is little kids have no, no concept of numbers, you know, so do you, think, do you think I'm like 30, 35? Good girl, good. Uh, that's what, <laughs> okay, join hands, you guys. Our Lord says, son and daughter, uh, this is a day uh, to be mobile, flexible, and pliable. I'm the potter, you're the clay. Uh, I brought you to this juncture in your life because there's been some setbacks. Uh, there's been some attempts of the enemy uh, to persuade you away from the hand of God and the call of God that is upon you. It's been a, a valley. Uh, it's been warfare. It's been difficult. The struggle has uh, raged on. Uh, but the Lord would say, I am with you. I am with you. I am with you. And even as the prophet in the Old Testament Testament said, Lord, open the eyes of my servant. And so when I did, uh, uh, the servant saw uh, the fiery chariots of Israel, and the uh, servant said, man, those that are with us are more than those that are against us. And I want you and you to know the odds are for you, and you're going to win. You're not going to lose. You're going to go over. You're not going to go under. The devil will win. The Lord will lose. I'm about to change the circumstances that you've been wallowing through, things that were meant just to bring you down and tie you up and bring uh, fear uh, upon you. I break the fear off you. I break the fear off you. And the Lord would say, I've not changed my mind about you, your ministry, your marriage, your children, the future. I'm with you and I'm for you. And the Lord would say, my son and daughter, uh, hang in there. Uh, recommit yourself in this marriage and watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it stronger. I'm going to wash everything in the blood that needs to be washed in the blood. I'm going to make you two white as wool and white as snow. So get ready for a healing. Get ready for a cleansing. Get ready for a fresh start. The Lord would say, the Lord would say, fresh start, fresh start, fresh start, fresh start, fresh start, fresh start, says the Lord. Lord, you will. See you guys. God bless you. <clears throat> okay, everybody doing good? Yes. Amen, amen. So is that good then, Dave? Just go ahead and start prophesying a little bit more. Okay, okay. Good, good, good. Everybody doing good. Everybody doing good. Good, 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 good. Uh, okay, I uh, want you guys stand right here, if you would, please. Husband and wife, your husband and wife. What's your first name? Bob. Hey, Bob, Ann. Ann. Bob and Ann. Hi, Ann. Uh, first of all, uh, I see uh, retirement accounts, whatever they're called, 401Ks, SEP, Roth. I see retirement accounts. I see them becoming more established, uh, growing by leaps and bounds, a financial blessing for the future. You'll not have to use those funds as quickly as you thought you would because there's more income coming and those retirement uh, instruments or uh, vehicles will be for a later date. So don't worry about 
the financial future. It's really good, says the Lord. The second thing I see is the word pastor over your heart. Now, before you overreact and get all freaked out, uh, I don't see you having to go to Bible school or seminary and quitting your job and becoming a pastor. What I see is you becoming more pastoral. And so God says, get ready. Your duties are going to change. Your daily routine is going to change. You'll be more pastoral than many paid professional pastors are. And I'm going to begin to let your gift of hospitality come forward. And you're going to begin to say, honey, sweetheart, to one another, we need to call up Bill and Sue. We need to call up Joe and Jane. And you're going to begin to connect to the younger generation. And I see your hospitality gift kicking in. And I see you bringing people out and just lavishing them and you know treating them like kings and queens uh, because there's a lot of hurting, wounded people uh, in the church. And God is going to put uh, like a medical anointing upon you and you, two doctors, two surgeons that I'm going to use to put people uh, back together again. There is also a gift of the Holy Spirit listed in 1 Corinthians 12 known as the gift of discerning or distinguishing of spirits. You're going to be a couple that operates in that gifting at a very high level. You'll see things others don't see. You'll see the spiritual causes of things that others uh, don't see. So I'm going to let you and you, my son and daughter, get a glimpse of what causes people to have the problems they have, and you will not treat symptoms, but you will go right to the root cause, the root cause in people's lives, and you will set captives free. Also, foreign lands, foreign lands, foreign lands. When this stupid virus is done, the Lord says, get ready, get your passports renewed, get some good, sturdy luggage, because you will stand on foreign soil yet, and you will preach the gospel, says the Lord. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Can I pray for you guys? Would that be okay? Would that be okay? That was pretty good, wasn't it? Huh? It's Bob, right? There's a movie about you. Did you ever see it? What about Bob? Yeah. How many has ever seen that movie? Yeah. Don't, don't tell him what it's about. Don't tell him what it's about. And uh, your first name? Brian. Hey, Brian. And? Pamela. Pamela. Hey, close your eyes, guys. Lord says, the blessing of the Lord is upon you. It'll make you rich and add no sorrow. You've come through decades uh, uh, where there have been issues and trials and tribulations, things that were meant to undermine you, things that were meant to discourage you, things that were meant to get you to leave and to quit and to run. But the two of you stood your ground. Way to go. The two of you said, we shall not be, we shall not be moved. And you weren't, and you aren't, and you won't be. For the Lord would say, you two have been faithful. The word of the Lord to you and you is that you two have been faithful, and I bless faithfulness. Number one, you two have been faithful in that which seems insignificant in life. Number two, you two have been faithful in responsibilities that pertain to others. You have made others successful. But most importantly, says the Lord, you two have been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, or the money management of your lives. Therefore, I am now going to give to you the true riches. Your real ministry begins today. I am birthing you. You're coming out of the birth canal. I'm birthing you and you into the ministry that I have called you to assume from before the foundations of the earth. Everything that the enemy has tried to do to abort that birth, to abort that birth, have failed and will fail. And I am cleaning up the past, and I am wiping the slate clean, and I'm giving both of you a fresh start. The Lord would say, this is the first day of the rest of your lives. You will make an impact on the body of Christ. And my son and daughter, I'm going to anoint you this time around. You tried to do other things before. It didn't work because there was no anointing. There was no now presence of God on your lives. Now there will be. Now I'm going to align you to a specific purpose and vision for your lives, and the anointing. Anointing, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is now going to come upon you and you, my son and daughter. So open up your mind, open up your heart, and the Lord would say, be filled. That's not an option. I'm not asking or suggesting. I'm commanding. Be filled, my son, with the Holy Spirit. Be filled 
my daughter with the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to bless both of you. And I'm going to give you two healthy in, uh, streams of income coming in. Money's not going to be the issue. Bill Payne's not going to be the issue. I'm the God of more than enough. And I'm going to give you more enough than enough. But the Lord would say it's time to connect to the duties and the responsibilities that I have foreordained for both of you to walk in. So get ready to be workaholics. Get ready to put in long days. Get ready to be considered real contributors to the church and real contributors to the kingdom of God. Contribute your gifts. Contribute your time. Contribute your abilities and your talents. And get ready, get ready, get ready to be a man and a woman that leadership looks to. I have entrusted you with many things. I've tested you in many areas. So now the Lord says, I'm going to get a return for the investment that I made in you and you. You two are going to out perform and outachieve and outwork many others because of the anointing of God that will now rest upon you and will rest upon you, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. Everybody doing good? Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Amen, amen. Young man, you're looking right at me right there. Yes, stand right up if you would, please. And what's your first name? Bill. Bill. Is that right, Bill? Hey, Bill. Lord says, son, uh, I'm drawing you in to the plan and purpose of God for your life. The enemy has tried to keep you in the back row. The enemy has tried to keep you on the outside. The enemy has tried to isolate you uh, based on early wounding that took place as a child. You've been on a defensive. You put a guard up. You wouldn't let people in. Uh, you love me. You serve me. You gave me your heart. But it's been difficult for you to connect and to relate and to socialize when God would say, uh, I'm going to lower your defenses. I'm going to heal your heart. I'm going to heal your personality. And I'm I'm going to make you more open, more ready to receive people uh, into your life. Uh, and the Lord would say, this is a day of great restoration. I am the good shepherd and I restore souls. So I'm restoring your soul, your mind, your intellect, your will, your emotions. There, I'm going to heal your emotions and you will never be the same. You'll say, Lord, what happened? I feel so different. I think differently. I want different things. I never wanted to do that. How come my desires have changed? That's the sign and the evidence that I have healed your soul this day, my son. You will never be the same. Now on the count of three, says the Lord, here comes the fire. You said, Lord, I have a hankering. <laughs> I have a hankering for the fire. I have a hankering for power. I want to be filled with power. I don't want to fall behind in any way. So I need something. The Lord says, my son, you've been operating on about 35 to 45 percent of the power of God that I have for you. Well, I'm going to make up for that loss. I'm going to make up for that slack. Here comes the Holy Spirit. Here comes the comforter. Here comes the comforter for you, for you, for you. So open up your mind and heart like you did before. Do not resist, do not question, do not analyze. There's more. There's more, there's more, there's more, there's more. There, I'm filling you on the inside right now. The fire, the fire, the fire, the fire is filling you up on the inside. Now, my word says I've made my ministers flames of fire. Get ready to burn white hot. Get ready to be a minister in the hands of the living God. Oh, by the way, my son, you're going to see some miraculous things take place between now and the end of the year. It means about two months. So Lord says over the next couple months. Get ready. There's some wonderful, miraculous circumstances that are going to break out in your life before the end of the year, or by the end of the year. So get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, says the Lord. You may be seated. You may be seated. Good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. You guys, husband and wife? No, stand up please, if you don't mind. Um, so you're not husband and wife? Okay, good. And uh, so um, are you dating? Yeah, we're engaged. You're engaged, and you're really dating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How long you been engaged? Three years. Three years. So you're dating, and you've been engaged three years, right? Yeah. So you're more than dating. You're an engaged couple. Okay. So what is the date that you set for your wedding? The fifth of December. The what? The fifth of December. Cool. You mean? this next month, like December, December 5th. You're finally making this happen, man, after three years. <laughs> Holy moly. Good. Yeah, well, just make sure you get it done. That's wonderful. I'm just...
crying because I get to. So uh, <laughs> make sure, make sure that you happen. It's a good. Make sure that you make it happen. It's a good thing to make it happen. Good, good, good. Uh, so I'm going to prophesy to you separately, like I did the other couple, because you're not you're not married yet. Uh, so uh, what is your first name? Kyler. Kyler. Uh, Kyler, the Lord told me to tell you um, that you've been dealing, whether she knows of these things or not, some she does, some she doesn't. The enemy keeps bringing up your past and reminding you of a series of really big mistakes that you made. And you know you're forgiven, but you can't get them out of your brain. You just keep going over them and over and over them. You're very open, very transparent, and very humble. You've given it all to God. You're not hiding anything from the Lord. And she knows about half of these things, but some of the other things you've kept in your heart, and they're tormenting you. And I'm supposed to tell you that once you ask for forgiveness, once the blood has been applied, that's it. You can keep going back and revisiting those things, but it won't do any good. You've been forgiven. So I want to tell you to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I don't want you to relive those things. I don't want you to think it's going to catch up with you. I sever. I sever the past off of you, and I prophesy it'll never torment you again. When you have thoughts, when you struggle with those memories, reject them. doesn't mean you're, you're in any way uh, ignoring them. It doesn't mean that you're in denial. It doesn't mean that you're lying and saying you never did those things. You've been very open with the Lord, but you've been washed and you've been cleansed. So you've got to let the past be the past. He wants to make all things new for your life so that when you go into this marriage, and I want you to do it on December 5th, when you go into this marriage, you're not going to have any baggage from your past. Do you get me? You understand? Okay, good. Because I want to tell you what I saw. Had the Lord not intervened, and he did, I see you behind bars, I see you in a jail cell, I see you in a state level penitentiary, how am I doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, but the Lord was merciful. He didn't want you in jail. He wanted you out here setting captives free. He wanted you out here setting prisoners free. So you've been the product of God's love and mercy. So walk in that love and mercy. Hold your head up high and just begin to look at other people that maybe you can help to set free. Do you understand what I'm saying? So slap me five. You're the, you're the <laughs> recipient of God's mercies. Amen. Now nobody else here is going to say, so what was he talking about? It's none of your business. Right. I'm in a public setting trying to deal with private lives. Try that sometime. But I'm just telling you what I saw. But the same to you. If the Lord had been merciful to some of you, you'd be behind bars as well. Amen. Amen. So, amen. We've all been equally forgiven. Amen. Good, good, good. Okay, you may be seated. You may not. Uh, and the Lord told me to tell you uh, that to me, young and just as pretty as can be, uh, but I see you've been through just a series of tragedies and letdowns and sorrows uh, that were not your fault. Uh, and don't cry, because if you cry, I'll start crying. So, but the Lord told me to tell you that everything that you've been bearing on your soul, it's just on you. It's like an active, open wound. If you've ever seen someone injured in their bodies and the wound is open and gaping, understand? And it's just open and you can see the flesh and you can see the muscles. And, uh, you know, you can see the bone. It's just, well, your spirit was wounded that way. And this goes beyond anything physical, even though it did involve some physical abuse. It goes beyond mental although it did involve some mental abuse, but your spirit was wounded. And you've not been bitter, not been resentful, not been unforgiving, just a beautiful, happy young woman, uh, but you've been carrying this woundedness in you for many, many years. Your childhood had three separate chapters of great wounding, one on another, on another, on another. And some of the people that you trusted the most were the ones who did the most damage. And so the Lord told me to tell you, this isn't hypothetical. Listen, Jesus isn't a hypothesis. Jesus isn't a theory. You know, theoretically speaking, I told you he's here. He's here. And when he shows up, stuff happens. Stuff happens. 
When he shows up, people get healed and stay healed. When he shows up, people get delivered and stay delivered. When he shows up, people get filled and stay filled. When he shows up, people get direction and it works and they're successful. This stuff is real. This is not hypothetical. This is not theoretical. This stuff is real. The spirit of, of, of the kingdom of God is real. The spirit realm is real. Jesus is real. Jesus is real. He's life changing. And he's changing lives today. If you choose to believe it. If you choose to believe it. If you don't, cheer up. Your prophecies can't come to pass. You're being healed is my point. So from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, in your spirit and soul and body, you're being healed totally and completely restored. Not good as new, better than new. That's the word of the Lord, better than new. Listen to me, young lady, better than new. Not good as new, but better than new. Better than new. I prophesy that. I declare it. I speak creatively, and I create in you a clean heart, a new spirit, no longer traumatized, no longer wounded. You will no longer bear the wounds of the past, or bear the wounds of your childhood, or bear the wounds of the three episodes you endured. All forms of abuse are coming off of you. You're being miraculously healed, miraculously healed, miraculously healed. A fast, fast process. I'm going to do it in minutes. Not years, not months, not weeks, not days, not hours. Minutes, minutes, minutes. Give me a couple minutes. Give me a couple minutes, says the Holy Spirit. I am healing you, my daughter. Oh, you've got musical notes all over you. You've got to stir up that musical gift. You've been sitting on it for years. Oh, it's no longer a secret. The secret is out. The secret is out. The secret is out. Tra-la-la-la-la-la-la. The secret is out. The secret is out. Tra-la-la-la-la-la-la. Musical notes, musical gift, musical instincts. Oh, if you're not, you got an instrument in your hands. Instrumental gifts. Instrumental gifts. Welcome to the ministry. Welcome to the ministry, says the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. Good, 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 good. Amen. Are you guys, husband and wife right here? Why don't you guys stand right up if you would, please. That was pretty good, wasn't it, huh? You make sure you get that done. You marry that woman. You understand what I'm saying? Marry that woman. Where are you going to get it done? Good, good, good. And your name, sir? Hey, Chad. And? Krista. Hey, Chad and Krista. Close your eyes. Lord says, son and daughter, I'm going to overshadow you with my love. Both of you need to be healed on the inside from a lack of love at certain times in your past where you did nothing wrong, but you did not receive a full measure of my love for you because of what you went through. Uh, there was an interruption. Uh, I've got to go back now and pour my love into both of you. There are chapters from your past, uh, even going back some decades where some things happened and it affected your emotions and your mental processes. And so I am love. The Lord would say you and you, my son and daughter, I am love. I am love to you and you. And I'm going to fill you with my love. That's all that you need. A great healing there is going to result as you receive my love today. Don't argue, don't debate, don't analyze. I just want to love on my boy. I just want to love on my girl. So let me love on you. That's what you need. That's what you need. The Beatles sang it in the 60s. All you need is love. What a stupid reference. Rump, bump, ba, ba, bum. But that's all you need. That's all you need. All you need is love. All you need is love. So I'm going to love on you, my son. I'm going to love on you, my daughter. It's what you need. Love is going to make you whole. Love is going to make you whole. It's going to affect your lives. It's going to affect your marriage. Lord says, son, I got a promotion for you in the workplace, in the marketplace. You're going to begin to see greater income coming in. It might involve a change. It might involve a shift. It might involve a new direction. But I want to bless the work of your hands. I want to prosper you, my son, uh, in the workplace. Woman of God, uh, you have a teaching ability, the ability to teach, to read, to absorb, 
and to regurgitate all that stuff that you've read. And so God says, get ready. Little children, little children, little children are going to be ministered to by your teaching gift. So get ready for circumstances to change. Get ready, my daughter, for me to connect you with a younger audience that's going to be fed by the teaching gift or instinct that I have put in you for the word of God to younger generations, says the Lord. Amen. You guys may be seated. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Are you guys husband and wife right here? You guys husband and wife? Why don't you stand right up if you would, please? You got to like a guy that wears leather suspenders to church. I like them. I like them. Where'd you get them? Did you? Yeah. Because you got some serious hardware on there, man. Yeah, I like that. Cool. But you had them custom made? Yeah. Way cool. Uh... Uh, and so your name, my dear? Tanya. Tanya, T-A-N-Y-A. Tanya and? Jim. Jim. Join hands, you are, close your eyes. Lord says, son and daughter, I have brought you to here to let you know of the great importance of your f- function and your contribution to the kingdom of God. You too have felt as if you've been out in the cold because you've been out in the cold. You two both needed to be healed of earlier woundings that have affected your ability to connect socially and relationally. But the Lord says, now you two are going to become highly relational, highly relational. I'm going to remove the hurting and the wounding and the scarring, and you two are going to jump for joy. And the Lord would say, son, listen to me. You're my son. And I've wanted to tell you this for some time now. I'm proud of you. You have made incredible spiritual progress. You have grown by leaps and bounds. And listen to me. When everybody else gave up on you, I never did. When everybody else turned their backs on you, my son, I did not. I knew that you were a work in progress. And I want to declare before all these witnesses, you are my son. I am proud of you. You are a work in progress. And I've only begun to turn you into the man of God that you've longed to be. By the way, I see your prayers. I hear them. I see them. I feel them. You're a man of prayer. You believe that I'm a God that answers prayers? Well, get ready, son and daughter. You're going to have some stunning answers to your prayers. So get ready to ask, seek, and knock. That's what you got to do. Get ready to ask, seek, and knock. And watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to answer your prayers. So my son, I'm proud of you. You've come a long way in a short time. You're a walking miracle. You shouldn't even be here because of a history of addiction in your family line. The enemy wanted you to be alcoholic. The enemy wanted you to be addicted. The enemy wanted you to run uh, your life into the ground. But I found you. I saved you. I restored you. I did a miracle for you. I did a miracle for you. And the Lord would say, my son, I have delivered you from several devils that wanted to uh, uh, defeat you uh, and drive you into the ground, but you are a walking miracle. You are my son. I am your God. You make me laugh, says the Lord. You give me joy. I get excited when you get up in the morning because the Lord would say, every day to you is a challenge. Every day to you is a new day. So my son, now feel the love of God. There. My daughter, now feel the love of God. My son, now receive the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. My daughter, now receive the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. Now, my son, know the peace of God that passes understanding. Now, my daughter, know the peace of God that passes understanding. And the Lord would say over both of you, the days of mourning are over. I want you to put the past behind you. I want you to grab a hold of your future. I want you to grab a hold of your destiny. Both of you have a future in me. Both of you have a destiny to arrive at. So the Lord would say, son and daughter... I want you to meet with the leadership of the church that you attend. I want you to sit down with them. Make sure that you've accepted me hook, line, and sinker. Make sure you've been baptized in water, immersed in Jesus' name. Make sure you've had hands laid on you to be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in languages you've never known. And then God said, I want both of you to get a brand new Bible, a brand new translation that's not as outdated as the old ones. And I want you two to become students of the Word, students of the Word, because over the next 12 to 18 months, you two are going to experience a spiritual growth spurt as you feed on the word of God says the Lord amen 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 worship leader with shredded pants coming out here worship leader with shredded pants and uh, who is that woman to you Uh, my friend 
Your friend, okay. Uh, hang in there, friend. I want to pray for you next. Uh, what's your first name? Amy. Uh, hey, Amy. Uh, the Lord says, woman of God, you need some miracles. You need me to turn some things around. You've not murmured. You've not complained. But you said to me, Lord, no offense. But I know the difference between possible and impossible. And I keep coming to you about some impossible things. I'm not murmuring. I'm not complaining. I'm not in unbelief. But is it wrong, God, to say, huh, that's impossible? Not only is it not wrong, it's right. I am the God of the impossible. Watch what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to start doing for you what you know is impossible. And I don't need your help. So just rejoice. Just go about your daily business and watch what I'm going to do. I'm the God of impossible circumstances. And I'm going to turn a bunch of them around. The enemy has had his way. He's tried to discourage you, depress you. He's tried to assault you mentally and emotionally. But you have kept that armor on. You fight your battle 24-7. You go to bed with your armor on. You get up ready to go for it. But the Lord would say, you need my help. You need my help. And here's a great word for you for the rest of this year. I am a very present help in time of trouble. So things aren't going to just go away overnight, but I'm going to give you victory. I'm going to let you walk through some things. You're going to come out on the other side. You're going to look back and say, you know, you were at work all along. I just didn't see it. And so the Lord would say, get ready for victory. Get ready for answered prayers. Get ready for blessings. And the Lord would say, the enemy has marked you for destruction. Even when you were a little girl, on at least one occasion, he tried to take you out. He wanted you in a grave. Oh. He wanted you in a coffin. He had your name on a tombstone. He had your date of birth. And he was etching in your date of death. But I intervened. You're a walking miracle. You're the last person in your own mind that you ever would have come to me and served me and lived for me. But I did it. I did it. You didn't call me. I called you. And I saved you from the enemy's attempt to take you out. So now the Lord says, as a young woman, you've even begun to wonder about your health and wanted to be, you've begun to wonder about some organs and systems and maybe something needs to be adjusted there. I'm adjusting your physical health. I'm restoring your energy level, which has been low for five, six, seven years. I'm touching you physically. You're welcome. And the Lord would say, I'm going to overshadow you. I'm going to overshadow you. The power and the presence of the Lord is going to dramatically increase, increase now there will be a cloud. Now there will be a cloud over you and around you, a cloud of the presence of the Lord. Now there will be a cloud over you and around you. My glory, my glory, my glory, my glory. Get up early. Get out that journal and start writing what you used to write down. You've forgotten to do it. Catch up, catch up, catch up to what I've been doing in your life. I want you to write a journal. I want you to write a journal. By the way, speaking of journaling, the Lord would say there's a book in your belly. There's a book in your belly. There's a book in your belly. And the name of the book is going to be To Hell and Back because you've been to hell and back. Nobody knows here of what happened to you. I did. I brought you through it. It's a miracle you survived. So get ready. I'll give you a chapter at a time. It'll be 12 or 13 chapters in the end. No more than that. But get ready in time to write and release the book, an autobiographical book of your life and ministry to hell in back by the worship leader with cut up jeans. Amen. <laughs> you may be seated. My right, dear, would you please come up? Everybody doing good? December 5th, right? <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. Everybody doing good? My wife and I love coming here. I don't think she was with me last time. We love coming here. You're our kind of folks. Amen. Amen. We really, really uh, love Dave and Denise. We actually love Denise more than Dave. <laughs> but, but you have to take, you know, you know, you know what I mean? Uh, but it's good to see the Landis's and good to see some folks that have been here a long time. And uh, you're our kind of folks. And uh, when we know we're coming back, we look forward to it. And so we've been very, very busy. The pandemic shut me down from February to the end of August. Unemployed, no meetings, no income. Phone just kept ringing, I knew who it was. The poor guys and gals at pastor churches had to cancel. No meetings, no special speakers. So uh, I was unemployed, March, April, May, 
June, foreign churches canceled, domestic churches canceled, June, July, and then I started back up the end of August, but I'm still getting cancellations. I just got one for November. The pastor's wife just got the virus, and he had to cancel at the last minute. Uh, but uh, I have uh, nevertheless uh, picked back up Ohio, uh, New Jersey, uh, several stops in uh, Connecticut, uh, New York, uh, Oklahoma. Uh, I'm now going back to several more churches in Pennsylvania, western Pennsylvania in November, then Memphis, and then Stillwater, Oklahoma. So I'm going to be busy these last, you know, four or five months of the year. But from March to um, August, listen, when I'm home pulling weeds from my wife's garden, you know that I'm ready to go nuts. I'm ready to check out. I'm ready to do anything. If I'm pulling we if I'm gardening, that means I'm dealing with extreme boredom. Extreme boredom. I actually said, I'm enjoying this. I was enjoying pulling weeds, which I don't do. If it's green, I mow it. I don't pull it out. So that's how bad it was. I was going stir crazy, and I'd be willing to do anything, including uh, pulling weeds. But we've all had to make adjustments, amen? But I want to say something real, real quick. Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That means Jesus is going to build his church, and no gate of hell, including a pandemic, is going to uh, come against them. He'll get the job done is what I'm saying. So I want to say something to all of you. If you've previously had dreams, visions, and prophecies, and you're scratching your head and wondering, hey, how's God going to do it? I don't know, but he's going to do it. Amen. Everything he said, he's going to do. Yes. Every prophecy, every dream, every vision, it's going to happen right when he wants. There might be a delay or two. There might be a detour or two, but either he is sovereign or he isn't. And if he is, and he is, everything he said he would do, he's going to do. It's just that the timeline is going to be a little different. So I gave a lot of prophecies before the pandemic, and I've given a lot of them since the pandemic. They're all going to come to pass. So if you're waiting for stuff to happen, just hang in there. In the end, everything is going to be the way God wanted it to be. Are you telling me he didn't know about this? Are you telling me this caught him off guard? Are you telling me this has thrown him off his... Absolutely not. So hang in there. That's the word of the Lord. Hang in there in Canton, Pennsylvania. Okay, my dear, would you please come on here, stand right there if you would, please. What's your first name? Jamie. Hey, Jamie. Uh, Jamie, first of all, uh, you've been very flexible, pliable, moldable, uh, a good student. Uh, when the Holy Spirit speaks, you're quick to answer and to respond. You'd be like the best student in the class. You'd go to the head of the class because you'd be like the teacher's favorite. Uh, the Holy Spirit has been your teacher. You always haven't had teaching come through man into your life, but it's come directly from him into your life because your spiritual life has been a little erratic, a little unsettled. You've had to navigate through some rough water. And you always said, Lord, I just wanted normal. I just wanted normal. And it wasn't your fault, but you've lived abnormally for about 20, 25 years because of things that were done around you and to you. And your life just hasn't been normal. You would say, boy, listen to this. You would tell us of what you've been through. But I'm supposed to tell you that his eye is on the sparrow, Jesus said. And there's an old song, he watches me. And so his eye is on you. He brought you here to let you know that in spite of everything that you see going on here today, God is interested in you. He made you the way he made you. You are a, a spark in his eye. You make him smile. Uh, there's a joy in him because of who you are as a person. And some people have not really felt that good about you in the past, but the Lord does. The Lord says, give her two thumbs up. The Lord gives you, as a woman of God, two thumbs up. And then say to her, uh, you have my recommendation, says the Lord. So the Lord is going to begin to recommend you to minister to the needs of others. Now I saw earlier someone bleeding and wounded and all that. And I see that same, same wounding on the inside of you. God is going to heal you of those things that wounded you spiritually and emotionally. And I see the Lord bringing a settledness to some very unsettled circumstances in your life. Uh, and I'm supposed to say to you, Psalms 20 
23, which we all know frontward and backwards. But I want you to go back to it and begin to read it for you. The Lord is your shepherd. And then he lists a number of benefits for everyone whose shepherd is the Lord. And I want you to begin to claim all those benefits since the Lord is your shepherd. I'm also supposed to tell you that you've been operating on a lower level of Holy Spirit power than you have wanted. You have seen the power of God in demonstration in certain situations, but you never thought that you could jump in and experience it for yourself. But God, I don't know you, but God has brought you here to fill you to overflowing with a new level of Holy Spirit power that you have never experienced before. This goes beyond your theology because not all of your theology is really up to date. God is going to renew and refresh and update and upgrade some of your theology because a little bit of it doesn't quite know how to handle me, but this exposure is good. The exposure is good, but God is going to update and upgrade your theology and make some revisions to it. Maybe about 30% of it is going to be revised. The other 70% is good, but maybe about 30%. But why you've been brought here, wherever you come from, is to receive more power from the Holy Spirit. You have lots of fruit. You're a fruitful believer, a fruitful Christian. Book of Galatians talks about fruit, but you lack power. And this is very common in my ministry. I see a lot of it. Now, believe it or not, you're operating on about 35, maybe a little bit more, but about 35% of the power that God has for you. So the neat thing is, he wants you to have more. It's not whether he does, we know he does. So I'm gonna count to three, and when I do, the power of the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. So if you would not mind lifting your hands, you okay with that? And closing your eyes, I'm going to just touch your forehead very lightly. And when I do, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you because he said he would. And then when I ask you to receive, you're going to receive him. So Holy Spirit, I ask you to come upon our sister, your daughter, your servant. Thank you. And my sister, I ask you to receive now the Holy Spirit. Receive that 65% that you didn't get the first time around. Receive the Holy Spirit. That's it. Breathe him in. Drink, 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 says the Lord. I am filling you to overflowing. Now there will be an overflow. Now there will be a surplus. Now people will place a demand upon you because they will sense the infilling of the Holy Spirit and you will never be the same. Last but not least, you came here today with a bunch of circumstances behind you that are causing great concern, great pain. You're just frustrated. You've thrown your arms up in the air and said, I just don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And God told me to tell you he's going to take over and he's going to start to bring resolution to some of the unresolved conflict that you have been living under for many, many years, going back some 15 years. So get ready for God to bless you. Get ready for God to answer prayers. Get ready for God to do everything that he said he would do for you this morning. Get a copy of the prophecy from the leadership. Write everything down, my name and the date, and then watch what God is going to do, says the Lord. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Everybody good? Don't want to keep you too long. Don't want to keep you too long. Amen. Real, real quick. If there was anyone here that you absolutely had wanted me to pray for and I didn't, up to five or six people, go ahead and call them up. Anybody? Real, real quick. Come on. Come on up. If Pastor Dave calls you out by name, come on up. Dave. Come on, man. Right there, bro. Okay, real, real quick. Good, good, good. Come on up, man. Stand right there. My dear, stand right there. And my dear, stand right over here. Everybody good? Yeah. <laughs> Remember what love does. Love puts others first. Yeah. Right? Nope. You, right here. Oh. You, over there. <laughs> Good, good, good. Got to do it the way I see it. Good, good, good. Everybody doing good? 
awesome. If you received a prophetic word, you got to get it. Why? Because you remember things that I didn't say, and you'll forget the things I did say. That's why we write everything down. We make it plain on, on paper, on tablet. The vision, make it plain, write it down so we can run with it, <coughs> those that read it. So you've got to write these things down, amen? God is looking ahead. This is not about, about today. This meeting's about next week, next month, next year. Come on. So we've got to write these things down. It amazes me that people don't do this. It amazes me they get a word from the Lord and they do nothing with it. I'm amazed. Then we come back next year and they want another prophecy. What, what, what did you do with the one a year ago? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Amen. Good, good, good. Your first name? Colin. Colin, close your eyes, man. And the Lord says, man of God, do not doubt the call of God that is upon you. Evangelism, evangelism, evangelism. Now we can do it my way or your way. The Lord says, like a Jonah, you're going to go to Nineveh. And how you get there, son, is up to you. You can go to Nineveh on the water, or you can go to Nineveh under the water, but you're going to Nineveh. So the Lord would say, rearrange your life, reprioritize your priorities, and put me first and say, yes, Lord. That's what I want to hear coming out of your mind, your mouth, and your heart for the rest of the year. I'm just going to steer you to a place of being mobile, flexible, and pliable. I want to hear the words, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. I want you to surrender and yield. And get ready, Jonah, because you're going to Nineveh. You're going to have a powerful life, a powerful gift, a powerful ministry, but I need you to cooperate. So we can do this one of two ways, the hard way or the easy way. I strongly recommend the easy way. So all I need to hear from you over the next two months is, yes, Lord. Then watch what I'm going to begin to do after the first of the year. The year 2021 will be a year of you coming out and getting into the call of God. Don't try to be an apostle. Don't try to be a pastor. Don't try to be a teacher. Uh, don't try to be, uh, be, just be evangelistic in my hands. Evangelistic in my hands. I'm going to use you to share the gospel and to see a number of powerful converts, says the Lord. And also, there is a spirit that is attaching itself to your body. And it's attempting to make you a slave to that spirit. And I snap the neck of that spirit and I break it off of you. Freedom, 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 says the Lord. You may be seated. You may not. Your first name? Jason. Hey, Jason, close your eyes. Lord says, son, I have need of you. You're going to fill a need. Uh, There's a niche for you to fill. There's a groove for you to fill. I need you. You're going to fit in. You're going to fill in a place of service to the Lord that no one else can fill in. You're not just different. You're unique. But don't think that your uniqueness disqualifies you. Quite the opposite. Your uniqueness qualifies you to do something for me that no one else in the house can do. I have no favorites, but if I did, you'd be one of them. Because the Lord would say there is great grace upon you, a willingness to serve. You have laid your life down for me. And the Lord would say, son, I want to remind you, it's time for you to deny yourself, to pick up your cross and follow me. Three simple steps. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me, and you will begin to discover the path and purpose of your God for your life. I want you to put the past behind you. I'm going to remove dysfunction from you, all forms of dysfunction. I remove it off of you, and welcome to the family of God. You're a son, a son in this house, so get ready to grow by leaps and bounds. I'm also going to restore the joy of the Lord that was taken from you. The peace of God is going to increase, and the love of God is being spread abroad in your heart now by the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Amen, amen. Come on over here, girls, if you would, please. Come on over here. Come on over, my dear, if you would, please. And your first name? 
Stacy, uh, the Lord says, woman of God, uh, you've been facing the enemy. He's been like a lion, a roaring lion. He's roared. He's intimidated you for the last time. I want you to rise up. I want to be your identity. I want to be your security. I want to be your voice. I want to be your future. I want to be your gifting. I want to be your destiny. It's all in me. I want to be your all in all. I want to be your source. I want you to come to me. I want you to ask big and I will answer big, but I want to be your rock. I want to be your rock. I want to be the foundation that you build your life upon. So I'm going to come closer to you. If you'll draw closer to me, I'll draw closer to you, and I will improve our relationship, and you and I will be more intimate, more intimate than ever before, <clears throat> and I will heal your fears, and I will heal your insecurities, and I will give you the identity that all of my men and women need. For the Lord would say you are now, just now, coming into that place of relationship and understanding with me where I will let you see who you are. I will let you understand what you are to do. For the Lord would say you've always been goal-oriented. You're just the kind of girl that's competitive and you've got to win. You're not satisfied with bronze or silver. You want the gold. I want you to have the gold. I want you to win in your life. But the Lord would say from now on, man will not be your answer. Do not frustrate yourself by looking to man for your answer. I want you. You are mine. I am jealous over you. I want you. I want to be your source. So all you have to do is let me. All you have to do is open your mind and heart and say, come on in. Come on in. I'm going to free you from the past. Those things that were done to you, freely forgive them. Freely forgive them. Bless them that cursed you. Bless them that cursed you. But I'm breaking those things off of you that bind you. I am setting you free. Lift your hands in praise. Enter into praise from now on. And God says, get ready for the first day of the rest of your life. Get ready for breakout and breakthrough for victory. Victory in your personal life is imminent. So thank me before the walls come down. That's how this works. Thank me before the walls come down, and they will come a tumbling down, says the Lord. Go get them. Go get them. Let me ask you a question, young lady. How old are you? How old are you? 39? You look 28. Isn't that wonderful? Go, go, go. Wait a minute. Not done. Not done. And uh, where's your hubby? Okay. That's okay. It's all right. You can cry a little bit. Uh, I see a heart change coming uh, in him. I see his heart changing. Now, now, sometimes prophets can be blunt, but um, uh, he's just ice cold, ice cold in here, ice cold. But it's because of something he went through that I don't think he ever told you all the details of. So his ice cold heart, do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not judging the guy, not condemning him, not embarrassing him, but he went through something like an event that just really wounded him here. And his, his love is cold. And sometimes, you know, there has been discussions with you and him about that and his love can go up and down. But God showed me his heart is gonna be healed. He's gonna be ministered to even in his sleep. There's going to be an angel. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, there's going to be an angel. Uh, his angel has returned. <clears throat> uh, his angel intervened two other times in his life when he was 4, 14, three other times, 4, 14, and 28. His angel's coming back. Angel's going to intervene, heal him, restore him. And you guys go through this incredible spiritual warfare at night. Uh, between 3 and 3.15 in the morning, the spirit comes into the bedroom and just begins to raise hell, just begins to raise all kinds of hell. And you wake up exhausted, and you're young and healthy, but you guys wake up exhausted, and there's just confusion and stress and turmoil and anxiety. And, oh, and that spirit uh, will no longer visit you at night because... The Bible says, let God arise and his enemies get scattered. So I declare with everyone here that loves you and believes for you that that enemy that comes in at night 
is going to scatter because God is going to arise in your life, in his life, give him a new heart, save the marriage, make it better, bless the home, and God is going to have his way in your entire family situation. Now you may be seated. <laughs> <clears throat> and your first name? Gloria. And the Lord would say, my daughter, you've been obedient, you've been a servant, you put others first, but the Lord would say, I'm saving the best for last. Uh, and the Lord would say, there was a miracle at the Canaan winning. There was a miracle. Uh, when I finally turned the water into wine, everyone said, man, this is really different. Uh, he saved the best wine for last. I've always done that for others, and now I'm doing it for you. You're not going to have to just get through these later years. I'm going to bless them. I'm going to bless your life. I'm going to bless your walk. I'm going to bless your contributions to the church, the body of Christ. I'm saving the best for last. Blessings are going to begin to be poured out in abundance in your life. There's going to be an excess, a surplus, an overflow of blessing and power and anointing. And by the way, that right hand carries a healing gift. you got to start slapping that right hand on everything that moves. And I'm going to start healing them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. There's even a family member that has been against you for years. That family member has done everything. They hate, he or she hates you, despises you. But there's going to come repentance and there's going to be a healing with a family member. And the Lord would say also some years ago, you were hit with a financial punch that almost knocked you out, but you recovered, you rebounded. But God would say there's a blessing in the pipeline. There's a financial blessing, a big chunk of money in the pipeline that's already in the pipeline, already headed back to you. If you don't mind, I want to bless you financially, says the Lord. Also, my daughter, you have an accumulation of wisdom, both from the marketplace and in the kingdom. And I want you to get ready to transfer that to other younger women. I want you to get ready to deposit workplace wisdom and kingdom insights into the younger generation. You have a better teaching gift than you thought possible. You are a communicator. You are a communicator. When you open your mouth, people get it. They get what you're talking about. But there is a lack of confidence, a shyness, and a timidity that maybe your best days are before you. Wrong, wrong, wrong. The Lord would say, now I will open doors. This is a new day, a day of many accomplishments in the kingdom of God. You will do them by reason of the anointing that now will begin to rest upon you. I'm stirring up that healing gift. I'm stirring up that prophetic gift. I'm going to give you dreams. I'm going to wake you up in the middle of the night, and you're going to say, that's what that crazy prophet said. And then I'm going to start downloading. I'm going to start speaking to you. You're going to pick up the phone and start to speak to family members you haven't communicated with in years and a couple of them are going to have gotten saved in the meantime and you're going to have a word of the Lord get ready to have a long distance prophetic word of the Lord ministry says the Lord amen amen pastor Dave amen amen isn't God good uh, you know just uh just so you know, and I, I haven't gotten to tell uh, Denny this, but I had lunch with a pastor friend of mine. And it's funny, this is, this is how God uses Pastor Denny. He's been wanting to tell you this for years, but he hasn't. So I just tell it to my church and they can know. It's, it's very good. Yeah. It's not like, not that you're 96 or anything like that, no. Um, he said that when he planted a church, in fact, most of you will know about Liberty Church and uh, Lon Williams, who's a friend of mine. But he, he was just planting the church, and they'd been there for, I think he said, five years, and nothing was happening. They had like 30 people and just couldn't get it going. And Denny grabbed him and said, you are an evangelist. God is going to use you. And that church, from that point forward, for the next 10 years, blew up to about 400 I want you to understand that you may not see anything about what was prophesied over you. There be, may be zero evidence that it is true right now. Receive the word of the Lord. Receive the word of the Lord. 
Right now, by the power of the name of Jesus, I declare the blessing of the Lord over you, his people. And I declare the freedom of the Spirit and that you would conceive all that was offered to you today. Not just simply if you received a prophetic word, but just what was in the Spirit. I, I, I just, in Jesus' name, declare in your spirit the receptivity of it that you would conceive what God has for you and that you would see it become the reality you live in. In Jesus' name, amen.